Islam, Islam, Islam. Islam. I'd like to give all perfect praise to Allah. Highest honest to the Holy Prophet, Noble Juali. Honest to his to his forerunner, Marcus Mosea God. And honest to all who are participating in the great comprehensive program of uplifting father humanity. Tonight, we have Brother Sheikh Adzim. We would have Brother uh, Khalil Ali Allah on tonight, but uh, it seems as though the brother is occupied at the time and uh, may not make it. So, but may Allah bless us be upon the brother. But we're still going to get into this dialogue. And this dialogue is a very special dialogue because I think it's a very, very, very misconceived um, aspect of esoteric and occult science. So this dialogue is going to touch on the left, the left, uh, in the comments of the previous show, brother, what brought that on. In the comments of the previous show, someone happened to get in the comments and say, um, it seems as though y'all are afraid of the left hand. And Brother Khalil immediately got into the chat or, or saw the comment and was able to answer before I was and said that, no, we're not. So when we have ones who are willing to um, dialogue that specific aspect of the path. Um, and then the brother contacted me and you know, introduced me to you and connected us to uh, even though he couldn't be here tonight, he's still with us in spirit and mind and definitely in the truth. So we had a brother tonight. I just like for him to, you know, introduce yourself and speak about your path before we get into this comprehensive dialogue. Speak about who you are in your path and the path of self-realization and knowledge yourself. Yes, indeed. Islam. Uh, I'm Sheikh Azam. Uh, so, my background in the left hand path began as uh, I mean, early you can, on. Uh, me. If you can, um, it seems like your mic, mic, your mic is kind of muffled. All right, how about now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know if it's me or you. Okay, go ahead. How about now, brother? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Okay, yeah, so, um a little background to keep it brief and simple you know uh i've been an initiate of uh many uh mystical uh orders um starting with uh obviously sufism um uh coming through different aspects of uh ritualistic magic um african traditional religions which are african spirituality such as um santeria lukami uh palo mayombe uh things of the such so um this began my journey initially to seek out different aspects of the esoteric namely the occult um often that which is labeled as forbidden or that which is hidden depending uh on the right hand side of that uh which which expresses more so of uh, monotheistic uh, aspects of the uh, esoteric within the exoteric agenda. So in other words, um, from that point on, it led me into uh, deeper regions to study and to understand those aspects of myself within the left-hand path and versus that in parallel and balancement of that of the right hand path. So um I understood it before I just went go hunt, go uh gun ho diving head first into it. Um so I'm speaking from a uh an experienced perspective of one who is an initiate as opposed to those who profess the left hand path and give a false perception based off of what is commonly found on the internet. Beautiful. That kind of what, what that does is it definitely opens up um 
what I would say a whole nother topic because most of the time ones wouldn't hear you know the conversation the left hand path and the right hand path being walked um simultaneously however um I have I would like to um, first ask you a question what is the left hand path because we like you said we have a lot of um individuals that are on the internet and not you know i'm not i'm not discrediting the internet for mm -hmm. anything or the source of source of information that it could provide you right however as i've had many conversations about esoteric and you know occult or mystery system or initiatory bodies Mm -hmm. um, the experience is so important in the overall understanding of what you truly are in possession of. So, in the best way that you could, because you know, man knows not by being told. That's but right. The best way you could. Can right. you explain to us and the listening audience what is the left hand? Now, that's a very good question, I must say, brother. Now, to keep it simple and basic, because we as even a, a, a Sufi master once told me, and this was a brother who uh, initiated me into uh, the Morit Sufi order. And he mm -hmm. said, a true master masters the basics. And that is something that is essential within the left-hand path. Now, within the left-hand path, there are many orientations, meaning that satanism fall in the category of left-hand path so mm -hmm. you have people who within that context of the left-hand path who look at that as a reform of what you would call reverse christianity so whereas one would say they give praise to a most high god the satanists would say they give praise literally to satan not understanding the significance of its meaning within title uh, as opposed to the actuality of something so this is the symbolic reference within the left hand path normally understood from a luciferian perspective now mm. there's a difference between the luciferian and the satanist so the mm. luciferian is one who seeks enlightenment because they understand that lucifer is not the prince of darkness is not a demon is a symbol of enlightenment because we understand that it comes from the latin romatized version of the form of azazel before azazel was known to be iblis who was the rebellious one so mm -hmm. uh in its base understanding the left hand path is a sanskrit word that means vama marga and that means the left way or the left hand path. And that is essentially a path that denotes ritualistic application, uh, tantric yoga, and alignment with enlightenment to the feminine Shakti force. So, mm -hmm. whereas the right hand path, was, which is uh, called Dakshina, denotes a path of purity. Whereas one seeks the path of ascension in mind, body, and spirit. So a Luciferian understands the difference between both and the elements of both of that both has a value within the balancement of the higher self and the lower self. Mm. You see, so is the conjoined union of the feminine and the masculine principles conjoined in perfect union. So the focus, the whole focus of the left-hand path practitioner is to gain insight through knowledge of all paths and all sources. So mm. they are not uh, confined to one way. However, there's a belief system within Luciferianism within the left-hand path that express non-conformity. So it's like a Sufi saying, I don't conform to the norms of the sheeple. Yet mm. we wear the woolen garments, <laughs> you see, that symbolize the purity of the path. 
Mm-hmm. So this is what ex- is expressed and understood by a true initiate that even dives that path of, of the shadow that there is no difference because all paths lead to one source. You see, every ending has its beginning. You see, it's just like we taught in Sufism. There's a lot of expressions in um, that within the left-hand path that gives honor to, um, uh, what is the brother name? He was a Sufi mystic that uh, started the Malamti order. Uh, Thul Noon al Mizri. Thul Noon, yeah. yeah. Right. The, 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 the black, the Egyptian adept. Thul yes. Noon was known as the last of the Setian magicians. You see, because the elder told me this, in the Temple of Set, which, one, which is one of the higher left-hand path orders, there's only three high level left hand path orders because most of these left hand path orders within the higher context of it are connected to the illuminati so -hmm. you have your dragon rouge you have your temple of set and you have your order of phosphorus that's the order i came from the order of phosphorus but initially through the order of set so it is a disciplinary um principles as taught within the theory versus the practice of initiation Mm -hmm. you see so it is an understanding of the higher self because the luciferian of the left hand path understands what is the lower self versus that which is the higher self and how to merge those things not to give into the lower desires let's say of, of 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 sinful acts you see, as one would think or the false perception of those who present that, you see, like certain people, you know, we heard the lectures of people like, let's say, Bobby Hemmett, where he mm-hmm. told the people, if you want to know about yourself going to some Satanism, I would never tell the people that because the left hand path, everyone is not built for this path because it's a path of discipline and is the path of intense study and is a path of ritualistic application where you're basically not in a setting where it's ceremonial you see mm-hmm. you're a solitary practitioner so um the misconceptions are are, are many just like you spoke of, of someone coming on the thread of, of the previous podcast y'all had that was saying about the left-hand path. You know, obviously that's a person who does not understand um, knowledge of self. He doesn't understand the hikmah because you have a lot of people that come through the path. They don't come from a background like us, you right. see? So that's a difference too. So this is what me and, and brother Khalil Ali Allah understands and yourself because he presented me for that reason to show that Okay, well, I know a brother, and we have a common understanding of what the paths mean and what the symbology of things mean because we we are not taking it literal. You see, there's a distinction. You see, I'm a one of the secrets of the left hand path is this, and it's initiatory structure, not people just saying they're from the left hand path. Because if you ask them and say, well, what initiatory system that you came from? Some people say it doesn't matter because these are people who are would be considered to be renegades. Mm. You see, um, with the Baphomet thing and not understanding what Baphomet is, because when you create something and you call upon it and you lack the understanding of it, then you can cause more more of a harm in your life than anything it's the same thing we know in the practice of ruhani when we're doing the kodam jinn magic you see when we're dealing with the alchemy alchemy the magical squares the sigil the tawis uh is very very similar because those aspects are used within the left hand path but in a distorted way you see so it's to say 
the example best given is like when they talk about people like Parliament and the Funkadelics and um, Jimi Hendrix, how they distorted the traditional way of the play the guitar. You mm. see, so they want adverse to the norm to perfect an understanding of that craft. You see, without regard to the praise of a literal Satan, the devil, or anything like that. That's within the left-hand path understanding. However, you have those who take it from a uh, theistic perspective. You see, so mm -hmm. they take it literally where they have a replacement of deity and replacement of the Most High. Because these are those who lack the understanding, again, of the higher and lower self. Right. No, but you least said you want to see the lower self, look at yourself. You want to see the devil, look at yourself. But there's an understanding within the value of the structure of how do we um how do we dive into that aspect of ourselves? Because just as it is an understanding of the tree of life, Shajaratu Haya is the tree of life, and Shadaratu Maut is the tree of death. One is going up and one is reversed going down, but the downside that is going into the depths of the abyss is actually going up because when you're down, you're looking up and vice versa. Mm. You see? Mm. Yes, sir. So, Another, yeah. I like the actual question mm -hmm. because I don't know if, you, if we are privy to uh, an elaboration of that topic. But one thing that comes up all the time when we talk about the left hand path, what, what ones would uh, associate with the left hand path and their misunderstanding. You know, in their, in their code and the mystery systems, we have what is known as signs and symbols. And as in the Moorish teachers, we are known as symbols for the conscious mind and men of understanding. Right. How long? We have this sign, the symbol, which it is, the sign and the symbol, which conveys certain wisdom and hidden known as the document, right? Because you brought it up just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. uh, could you give us like, a listening audience uh, an elaboration on the Bible so we can get a standing outside of the illusion of the cast when they see the the symbol, not what it actually is, but what it can be, but also the, the pristine expression of what the symbols are. Well, yeah, the Baphomet is is a dual symbol. And as I said earlier, the Baphomet symbolized Abu Fi Hamid, the father of wisdom. Mm. And many of the earlier Islamic tribes um uh held the Baphomet because they understood the dimensions of the father of wisdom as it was called among many of the tribal orders because mm -hmm. it's just like you have in the east um especially in the sudan you have those who practice something called kujor or czar the czar mm -hmm. cult Mm -hmm. And the Zarko can only be moved by a feminine energy, although men can attend that that cult. You see, they do the chants and the certain musical instruments that uh, call forth the jinn or the genie. So the Baphomet is considered on in westernized magic as uh, what is called egogori. So it's like when you see in Hollywood, they holding up the Baphomet. So they really, in a sense, gave a part of themselves to the Baphomet because Baphomet can be the personification of something that's a reality within mm -hmm. the psyche of the mind or to the initiate, it can symbolize many different aspects that relate to the self. You see, it's just like in comedic, in the comedic system, we understand that there's a, a dynamic within duality that symbolize the female and male generated principle. So this is why when you look at the Baphomet, it has the breast, 
and it has the phallus of the male because it symbolized the duality of those principles within the self in alignment with the feminine gender. So mm. it's just like in Sufism, we're taught about the, the, the energy of movement, centrifugal and centripetal force. One is a, one is a pulling and one is a giving. So it's absorbed through, uh, those, gr those, uh, grids system of the earth to pull in that energy. So the Baphomet symbol that symbolizes the dimensions of the mind of the higher self and that aspect of the masculine side of the mind and the feminine hemisphere of the mind mm. because they taught this in the in the in the cities of atlantis that all beings had the masculine and the feminine aspect of the mind so the correlation and conjoined union with the sun and the moon it's just like the sufis teach there that um uh night and darkness the sun and the moon are equally measured Allah has equally measured those things in the understanding yeah. within the divine man, the spirit man. You mm. see, Noble Drali taught about that, the spirit man, you know, the workshop of the mind where things are made by thought. So yeah. we think within the higher dimension to understand what the bafflement is outside of the traditional interpretation of bafflement. Mm. You see, so we go back to the origin of Baphomet and its Arabic origin in reference to the value of what it serves within the purpose of a true initiate. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you know that, but, uh, whoa, whoa. So there's many different symbolisms. It, like, like I said, it depends on the orientation because it has also, and I wrote about this uh, um, somewhere uh, before some years ago, uh, the correlation between uh, the Necronomicon and the Arabic origin of the Necronomicon uh, um, and it's parallel to that of uh, the new text that Neneva Sadrat wrote, he's an initiate, uh, who was a jinn magician, um, um, who wrote the book of deadly names. So there was always a parallel between th that aspect of it within the darker aspect of it that we call sorcery, because sorcery is to ensorcel a certain power. So we mm. know that even the Moors through England, that the so-called witches of England and you know later on over here in America were taught by the Moors. This is the whole symbol of the Baphomet, the black man of the Sabbath, which was literally a black man teaching the witches. Where you get your, the wise one, which has its origin in Kemet as Wajet, which is the wise ones of the craft. Come on, brother. So, yeah. Yeah, I just I have I have a brother coming on from um if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I heard that you said that you was a um initiate of the Mordeo order. The what order? The Mordeo order. Right. Myself as well. Um Yeah, under under brother T uh Tuba Sufi. Yes, sir. Yes, Sheikh Sufi Baba. Right. Yeah, Baba Sheikh Sufi Yeah, I'm an initiate of, of a Sudani uh, Su uh Tarika as well. Uh, yes, be, before that, you know, yes, because sir. that's my that's my origin, yes, you know. Sir. We have a brother by the name of Sheikh Bilal, uh, follow. Um, I just invited him on the um on the um on the show, being that the brother uh Khalil wasn't able to make it, and I know he would definitely love to make this uh, um a more extent a more extensive dialogue because he would be able to dialogue with you as well. Um, I like to um ask another question. You mentioned the Sufi path in a manner of in relation to the left hand. Path. Oh yeah, no doubt. Da tariki tarikat, from the yeah. darkness to the path. Yes, sir. Um, because in the Sufi path, we always speak about being light beings. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Gaining more light, 
you know, um, becoming like mm -hmm. DC. Could you um, demonstrate in conjunction that in conjunction with the left hand? Because we have so many, okay, so we, have, we, have, we have a practice in, um, in, our Sufi, in, in all Sufi orders known as Zikr, right? Mm -hmm. And um, how would that correlate into the way of the left hand? That's interesting. That's a very, very interesting question because, <laughs> because in the left hand path, we have something called styota. And styota is basically, um, uh, it's just like in Sufism, where in Dhikr, we lose ourselves in the chant, we lose ourselves in the moment. So, within the ritualistic uh, aspect of the left hand path. We're not, again, we're not talking about what is seen on the social media and the internet. We're talking about real initiatory left hand paths. So we have something called styota. And styota basically functions on a form of left hand path sorcery called uh, Yatuk Denoy. So Yatuk Denoy deals with older aspects of the jinn. So, Styota, I'll give the example, is similar to Zikr, the Sufi chants. So, there are certain chants that are used along with sigil that we would call in the Sufi order, Tawis, or Tawis, which is based upon sigil magic. So, there's a similar uh, application within the left-hand path, because when one there's a distinction, and I, and I have to make this clear. When I say the left-hand path, that can apply to any orientation of the left-hand path. So I wanna be specific in um, stating that specifically to the Luciferian agenda. Within Luciferianism, within the left-hand path, many high initiates come from high Sufi orders. Just like you have the Yazidis of Iraq. You see, that's actually a mystical order because they uh, understand uh, within their initiatory degree, although they carry something called the Black Book uh, as well as the Quran, but they have been persecuted because they have been labeled as non, uh, 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 within not the orthodoxy of Islam, the traditional aspects of it. So we find within many... Um, tribes within Africa, the Sudan, Ethiopia, West Africa, you see Islam there. Just like we look in Mali, you see Islam there. But they have tradition by which they follow that is known to be anim animist practices, just like the, uh, the uh, Dogon tribe. You see, their elders are known as imams or sheikhs or such, just like in Sudan and Ethiopia, they're known as Mamazar and Babazar because they deal in aspects of ritualistic uh, application within prayer and meditation. So um, um, I didn't want to get on point of your question. So um, we kind of rephrase that again for me. So I was I, I asked um, as myself um, we're both and, and being that you spoke about um keeping keeping to you know traditional elements in that, um um you know the more deal they especially known for that you know Barke Sheikh or Mahabamba Barke Sheikh Ibrafal. Ibrafal, right, right. Um, <laughs> right. And that and and, and and that that's a very important element in more deal. So the question I had or I was referring to was that the, 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 the practice of zikr as okay, right. I'm back to it now. Yes, right. So within styota, that is a practice within the left hand path that um you lose yourself in the moment of the chant. So the chant can be through uh, a particular, let's say uh a certain kind of ritualistic application, right? Uh where you're invoking. So invoking is um, so the Luciferian, what, what, what we do 
is we assume the deific mask, whereas others, you know, like you see these comedic organizations and they say, oh, they worship Isis or Ra and Osiris and all that. We, as Luciferians of the left-hand path, we don't subscribe to that because we understand energy and power and knowledge and enlightenment. So what we do, we assume the deific mass to say that whatever identifications it have, we relate that and identify that to aspects of the self. It's just like with the 99 elements of the law. We, we find aspects of those attributes and relate them to ourselves. So when you chant in repetition through ritualistic application, you empower the ritual circle, thereby ensorcelling it with energy. This is where the term sorcery comes from. However, it's been given a negative, uh, um, you know, uh, interpretation, you know, to those who are not initiates, obviously. So um, um, you lose yourself in the moment of the chant. And in, and in the same time, it empowers you within uh, the axis, the central point of the circle. You know, so we know about the coup, the axis, the central point. So it's the same concept. And this is why uh, true initiates understand that there's no real differentiation between the left-hand path and right-hand path. Although there are aspects within the left-hand path that... Um, uh, uh, are non-conformist. So in other words, there are certain ritualistic applications that break from the norm of dogma, you see, to empower the self, to understand individuality, but understand the higher aspects of the self in conjunction with the lower aspects of the self. So they'll do certain rituals like, you know, uh, uh, a denial, so if you're doing a denial of the pack of God, you have to understand as a conscious man, what are you denying? Okay. Are you denying your higher self or are you denying your lower self? Mm. Or are you denying the illusion of that which is the perception of Even. what appeared to be, right? <laughs> because essentially it's about stripping from the veil of illusion. It's just like the Sufi. They are going ice. A brother once told me, I said, man, I'm going to isolation for a, for a whole year. He said, too much isolation, brother. Um, he said, ain't good. Go in the Kawa 30, 90 days and journalize your experience, thicker, you know, um, all of those things. You know, learn the formulas of a of, of Quran. Because in Quran, we understand through the practice of Rohani, which is uh, the right-hand path, because the right-hand path inspires truth, wisdom, knowledge, and building mind, spirit, and body. Whereas the left-hand path is an antinomian path, meaning it goes against the norm of organized or dogmatic religious structures. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so despite the, <laughs> despite the common, you know, theme and, you know, your brothers out there saying this and, you know, like it's a system, you know, a master once told me, he said, this path is not, um, he said, it's not, a, he said, it's not the path of even the mystic. It's not a path of conversion. You see, and this is where people are not able to distinguish or differentiate, you see, because you can have a Muslim coming to it and say, oh, I deny Islam. That means you ain't understand yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> there's a saying in the left hand path, and this is this is this is a uh, ironic statement from um, a master. And you have people of all different ethnic groups that's another thing um um some of which are from the morris orthodox church that's another thing so um we understand that jahannam right there's a being that a law points there named king malik right king malik 
is taught in the left hand path. And it states that the great reality behind King Malik is a law. This is coming from the left hand path. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking about, we're talking about white boys. <laughs> who infiltrate every aspect of the tradition that has to deal with enlightenment and illumination because of the fear of death. And we know we, we can go with that. That's a, that would be a whole nother topic discussion. You know? But the Sufis um uh, to my understanding from the Sufi masters of the Sudan, they told me about the great Mahdi. And although people like Dr. York, he spoke about it, um, but he was not from that family. He was not from that lineage at all. It was two Ansar groups here in America that a lot of people didn't even understand and knew, you see. So, uh, all the Sufi masters perform what, what is called the Hadra. And in the Hadra, that is the higher form of initiation within the circle of the Zawiya. You see, um, and then that they receive such an enlightenment that is known by certain Sufi masters that they can perform, they, they can perform such heights that are considered to be miraculous, you see? So, um, there's a secret among the Sufis of Sudan. This is what the War of the Mahdi was about, of the British, because they possessed a certain secret among the Kalwatiya order, you know, who Malachi York claimed to be a part of, but he was not. I got the information to prove it. That's another discussion, however. But there's a secret that's known among them, a certain chant, a certain ritual that has to be performed for a year straight that the Jews was after this sacred tome or this sacred ritual. You see, and they held it secret. So if you had asked them about it, they would laugh and say it don't even exist. That's how secret it was. Mm. Such was would be the case with the Mor- M- Morit and uh, Ibrahim Falls organization. Mm. You see, there's it's a like- similar group in Morocco called um, um, the Ganawa Brotherhood. They wear like fezzes, these kind of elaborate looking fezzes with locks. Mm. And the oldest master is a hundred and something years old, but don't even look it. Mm. So there's always tradition within those forms of Islam because we hear it. We hear um, certain things in relation to, uh, you know, the elements of nature, uh, the jinn the higher aspects of the self, the Ruhan or the Hafadu, which are guardians of the Quran, because a lot of people don't know that in the Quran, each chapter is a formula. Mm. And each chapter, each formula of that chapter is an overseer of a Ruhan. A Ruhan is like, um, they're not jinn. So there's something that is like, uh, in a category of their own. So mm. Hafadu means guardians. That's like Hafiz, Hafiz al Quran. So there's the guardians, Hafadu, Ruhani is like in Islamic, the, the right hand side of it is called Ruhani. The darker side, which is the left hand path in Arabic magic, it's called Seher. So those practitioners, uh, deal more so within that aspect of evil magic as opposed to an understanding. 
So a lot of them even seek the Luciferian path, but a lot of the Luciferians within an initiatory um, system deny them because they'll come saying, hey, can you create gin for me? I'll pay you this and pay you that. But it's not easy to create gin. It's something that you would have to give up of yourself just to satisfy the person that's coming for you. And that's not worth it. And that's where a lot of people get lost in the left hand path. You know, uh, arrogance, not knowing certain things, not having knowledge of self. And you find that, you know. Mm. That leads me to uh, bring the brother Sheik. Uh, Bilal. Yes, sir, brother Islam. How you, brother? Who in? Yes, sir. Uh, Islam. I was well inside my life. Yes, sir. Um, I know it's a lot. I've been watching your facial expressions, brother. I see. And yes, sir. I, I uh, in, man. <laughs> this one of the shakes in our order, man. And, um, you know, Slam Alaikum. Alaikum Slam. Slam. Go ahead, brother Shake. Uh, I know you got something to say. Yeah, I already hit on two of the primary figures that I was going, you know, use as a, as a slight example and demonstration between uh, Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba and Sheikh Ibra Fall to see like there's a reason why whenever you see pictures of Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba, he got on all white, pure right hand path, right? Pure white. Sheikh Ibra Fall, the by fall tend to wear patchwork uh, tunics mm -hmm. and of right. multiple colors, like Whatever right, just time. like the Mahdi of Sudan, he wore, he wore those patch. Yeah, exactly. It all comes from this uh this hadith that uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him uh, says to a person who, rips, mm -hmm. who rips his uh rips his uh tunic on the way to prayer. Right, Prophet Muhammad attributes to him like you know what? I'll just patch it up. Don't, don't throw it away. Right, patch it up. Keep patch it up. Like, still keep going. So for the by far with them having multiple patchworks of an array of different colors. It's also a hint as to why they wear those sunglasses because they can see the light from all different uh, variations. <laughs> not, not just the pure white, light, <laughs> not just the you know praise and worship and and, and that type of, of, of traversing the path that way. They see it differently, and they see a, a lot more of it because they see it differently. So. Sometimes if a, if a bifall and an orthodox Muslim meet, that orthodox Muslim's like, nah, man, you ain't no Muslim. I don't know what all this bifall stuff is and these talismans and these bees with this wood that only grows in Senegal. I don't know what kind of spiritual attachment you have to it, but like all, all of that stuff, yeah, like, nah, you can't be getting ready to prepare for Ramadan. Like, like that? No. Nah. I wouldn't dare look at a bifall and tell him he ain't no Muslim. That's right. Because yeah, it's kind of the same thing as you were building on, man. Uh, we look up Sheikh Ahmadu Mamba and we see the Murat path and we and we see the, the, the spiritual dimensions of it. But then when you see Sheikh Ibra fall and you realize that during Ramadan, which I'm glad this video is going on at this point in time because Ramadan is about to start. Yes, indeed. Right. But, the, but, but Sheikh Ibra fall and the by fall there's a few things about them, right? You'll you'll rarely ever catch them making salat. They don't Isn't fast it? during the month of Ramadan. They're not going to be in the mosque right now. If if they are, they're in the kitchen. They cooking food for the people that are getting ready to break their fast. But to mm. everybody else on the outside in the Orthodox world, that looks wrong. It looks haram. Haram, right, right. <laughs> Translate haram to what you were building on. Haram is essentially something that kind of looks left-handed, like right. You a Muslim, right? Right. You know, because mm. we we are Sufis, and I understood this about the murid and Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba and uh, Ibrahim Fall that when you when you break from the norm of the structure, you know, of traditional ways, you know, you gain more of a value of your spiritual perception. And, you know, especially in your isolation and understanding um, those aspects of yourself. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, 
It's just like the saying of Rumi. I searched all my life for law and only found myself. I searched for myself and only found myself, you see. So, you know, there's a greater understanding because when you find yourself, there is a point where we come to that conclusion of the annihilation of the self, where we give up that. You see, because we seek to understand the higher dimensions. And a Sufi master once told me, he said, look, don't worry about missing prayer. If you think and you walk in, you can pray. You in meditation. Because it's just like that in yoga. There's many different forms of yoga. There's mental yoga. You can walk while you're doing yoga. You can think while you're doing yoga. You can talk while you're doing yoga. So it's, it's a balancement. And once we understand that balancement, it's just like that within um, those ritual applications of breathing in the Sufi methods of the breath, breathing, the science of sound healing, wadifa, uh, um, vicar, you know, purification. Um, uh, all of those elements apply and it, it, it helps us within our understanding of reaching the higher dimensions of the self and breaking away from the norms of what 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 is typically accepted. So that that's interesting what you say, brother. Definitely. I mean, some of the stuff is is just kind of how they say hidden in plain sight, right? Like plain as day, hidden in plain sight, but you'll rarely ever hear it in a in a mosque. To figure out there's a, a hadith or an attributed saying to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that says, but I hate to paraphrase, but him and the Sahaba or his companions are leaving the mosque. They just finished making prayer, but they see somebody that they know coming up to the mosque to make prayer. So one of the people walking with the Prophet, peace be upon him, decides to say, <laughs> they put two and two together like, we're late. Prophet Muhammad, tells, Prophet Muhammad tells the person that says, hey, man, bro, late. He says, Allah judges us by our intention. Right? And the only way to expatiate or the only way to make up a prayer is to make it up. So don't look at the fact that he's coming to the mosque late as some kind of evil or some kind of like, oh, right. bro, you got to do some extra, extra, extra stuff to make up for this. Like, right. no, he's, he's on the way to go do just that. So there, there's nothing wrong with it. That's yeah, wrong. it's just like we know in the Quran it says each direction belongs to Allah. So people, you know, if you don't, if you miscoordinate your direction, each direction belongs to Allah. You see, it's just like we say in the left hand path. There's a saying, right? Uh, if you face east, the north is facing your left hand, right, <laughs> and vice versa. So it's equally measured. So it's that, it's equally that's measured. That's that will go into the statement of the Holy Quran where it says that Allah is the Lord of the two east and the two west. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. You know, because if, if we pay close attention, it doesn't insinuate a north and a south. Right. It doesn't insinuate that. Exactly. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's that Quran, but um, Allah is uh, the, the Lord, uh, owner of while the east and, and the west and the west yeah mm -hmm. al mamalaka yeah. al magribi <laughs> so that speaks of the that speaks of the rising and the setting of the yeah right at a, at a left and a right left and a right a left and a right left yeah and a right yes sir yes right. sir how else can you have proper balance without something of 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 equal weight on, on right. both sides of this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the spells in Islam. I, um, it's called Al Mizan. It, it symbolizes the scales of all things equally measured. You know, all things are held within the balancement. You see, it's just a matter of <laughs> are you going to dive within that other side of self, the shadow realm? You know, because that's an isolate realm, because those things you approach within your own understanding mm. of of understanding the law within you, because uh, we know that all things in creation are aspects of a law, Tyler, you know, um, 
Allahu Anal as Samawati Wal Ard. Allah is the uh, light of the heavens and the earth. So we all we understand that all those things are bound within uh, the boundary of the scales of of balancement. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So I heard Sheikh Bilal. I remember I saw you post something on Facebook, right? And I think this is going to get right into the topic. And this is a, and, and 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 I think this is something that I haven't heard too many people speak about, especially when we talk about the practice of zikr, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about getting into the space between the zikrs All right yeah the the space between the zikr or or the the space between the breaths mm. that's yeah <laughs> mm. come on yeah. talk to us now <laughs> no 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 i know both of y'all brothers know about that, know about that. come on shake sufi gave it to us in a real quick aphorism right um mm -hmm. He said that Allah doesn't exist in the past and Allah does not exist in the future. In the Allah future. In the now. Right, exactly. Allah exists yeah. in the now. You try to think about something in the past, but you try to think about Allah in the past, you've brought it to now when you're thinking about it. And it'll never happen again. Right. And if you try to think about anything that's possible or plausible in the future, you still conceptualize that. Right. You brought it to now. Right. Whatever you were trying to think about or conceptualize, you're still trying to do it right now. Now. Right. So have so, to recognize that it's it's you doing it now and not something. Thing. Right. So we hear that we hear that also that the past and the future does not exist within the present now. You see, because this is assimilation. And we understand through the simulation that if the mind think within that aspect, this is what makes it a simulation. So we say in the left hand path, stripping from the veil of illusion. So that's a great understanding that you gave right there. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely of, of, of Islam in the path and, and that you realize you need balance to do it because that uh, that other verse you mentioned, Allah, who knew Samawati, well, are if you go a little bit deeper with just two of those words, Samawati, while well, they'll translate Samai or Samawati to mean uh, heaven or the heavens. Right, the heavens. Right. Or as the, the earth. But Samai or Samawati is the higher realms of The higher realms of dimensions of the right. <laughs> that, that, that space between, right? Is that space between? Is the space between the sixth chakra right here and the seventh chakra that's not seven. That's the mm -hmm. Samai, Samai, the higher realms of consciousness. The argument is the corporal human body. The corporal, right? That's right. This thing that you have to the essence of that game and have to make that game its highest and its drama or its lowered. But if you say that shit in the mouth, they can throw you out. <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> we working with it <laughs> we were we all in the court <laughs> I'm the lad. we all in the court <laughs> yes, yes indeed yo this is what the people need this yes, is what sir. the people yes, need sir. and I'm, I, I'm honored that your brothers invited me in and um this is what the people needed you yes, know sir. yes sir. so i asked another question, another question. on the sufi path we're taught that to have a guide is is is, is very important. um when we're dealing with the how important is it how important is it to have guys, um, Bob, whatever, whatever we may title it, but we both understand that we all can understand both of us in the audience and what I'm seeing today. Um. Well, I'll say this. Um. Uh. I'll say this. Say this. Uh, 
through a lot of the initiatory systems, especially the ones that I've come through, a lot of them are are structured within um, uh, temple, kind of like temple based settings. Mm. You see, so um, and one of the structures that I've I've come from and it's been initiatory in is more so of uh, of a of a self initiatory system. So application of work is giving, and it depends on um, your advancement and your study and your ritualistic application with within what is giving. So what is presented to you, you are able to create uh, basically a framework within the design of your own making. So it's not necessarily a bunch of people coming together to perform rituals or anything like that. However, within that system in some cases that is the, that is what's going on so there is mentorship in a lot of the systems just like it is in the sufi traditions or certain uh initiatory systems like the golden dawn and such which the brother khalil Ali, uh, uh allah came through as well as myself so um but when you reach a certain level and you understand certain things from a theoretical and ritual application perspective, there's no no longer a need for that. So you break off to create a structure of your own design. You see what I'm saying? So there's really not a, a structure as you see within Sufism that there's a label of a shake or anything like that. So it's not designed in that particular fashion. Okay. You know, however, there are mentorships or certain, um, uh, I would say, uh, group discussions. Um, um, so, like, within the level that I'm in, in the left-hand path, I'm called to even speak on aspects of Sufism, you see, oh. um, because a lot of the left-hand pathers, um, um resonate with that you see and that shows uh an interest within the balancement of gaining that knowledge to be able to differentiate of what is what so it's really uh not designed in that fashion so it's like a path where you're left on your own mm -hmm. that's the left hand path you're left on your own like they say, like we say, like we say, you know, <laughs> right? It's just like the uh, uh, the fakir or the fukara that those are like the, the symbolic of the poor righteous teachers, as we will say. Yeah, you right. see, so you left in a, a a path of, you know, this is why they call it the crooked path. It's not to say crooked like you're committing acts of debauchery or, or evil or anything like that or things that are haram because there has to be a balancement and understanding the self. It's just like in the left-hand path, there's a ritual that focuses on, it's similar to Sufism, that focus on it, they call it, um, they just give it another name, they call it building the body of light and building the body of shadow. So essentially, that's an ascension ritual that calls for a uh, certain ritualistic day-side application. So day-side ritual, applies to that what applies within the illumination of um the solar aspect of things so like vicar meditation fasting uh um eating the right foods preparations for this or that so one is not just going into something and saying you know i went into a ritual and you know um and this is what i received so there's always a preparation. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> That doesn't mean just starving tomorrow.
you're starving tomorrow. You wake up tomorrow and you just you eat breakfast and you start fasting. You don't have any intention set around what you're doing or why you're doing it. You're just starving yourself. Mm-hmm. If there was no intention set, if there was nothing that was to a forefront that gave apple inside and outside meaning of what you're getting ready to do. Then whatever you're going to do is no level. I guess I would like to say, I wish I didn't know what I'm but to say this. All things that are not good things are no thing. All things that are not good things are nothing. Or all things that are not good things are no thing, nothing at all. They don't matter. They didn't benefit the, the situation at all. True indeed. True indeed. Definitely. Ron gives us a hint. That's why I sort of feel Ron Ryan was a little favorite. Like, 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 I think it was um, Abdul Basit, uh, the first uh, Quran reciter I heard recite Surah to Rahman or uh, a chapter of the Rahman or the Most Gracious. And he talks about the, the, the Mizan, a bunch in that particular surah in the Quran, the, the balance, the scale, right? It gives a whole bunch of uh, things we have to deal with during this life. We have to deal with. We can't glaze over that part. We have to deal with certain things in this life. And Shea Keeper Fall told us the harder, the better. So no matter how hard this thing is, if I get over it, I'm going to wind up with some strength I didn't have beforehand. Well, everybody else is still back there praying for somebody to come do it for them. But if I get over it, now I got blessings and benefit from the, the struggle I did to get over it. And I've, I've actualized and I've realized this, this being that everybody else worships over there all my life, that they're praying that they help them get over the speed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. The harder, the better. That brings to mind the harder, the better. You know, because I don't, I don't want to uh, present myself as um, I'm someone who uh, represents the left hand path in the sense of the background and my origin of culture and Islam and mysticism and Sufism and all of that. So, um, but there's something that brings to mind that we, we we're taught in the left hand path that uh, with the harder the better. It reminds me of a saying in the left hand path that opposition builds strength. And so, would you at least think that um, a soldier, um, without a fallen soldier, never knows his strength? That's right. That's right. You see? So, yeah, you know. And, yeah, and it's, it's all, it developed by the exercise of strength. So, it's through the toy. You know that we experience that actually builds up in character who you are the characteristics of yourself you know those those, those parts of our that we operate in a, in a constant process you know what i mean one of the questions that was asked is that um what did the lord self say to the higher self when they met at one time mm. at one time you know what i mean um we have to constantly be in that moment at one time. You know what I mean? That ever present moment. And understand that this great meeting is always happening. You know, you know, and be conscious of how we are operating, how we're thinking, what thoughts are we thinking upon, and how and what are we projecting into the ethers, because what we project into the ethers build, shape, and mold our reality. Our reality, that's right. I'm learning more and more every day. Right. You know, um, to be conscious of what you're thinking. Because, see, in this society that we exist in today, there's so many things that distract us from being conscious of what is actually going on inside of our own head. 
what we are allowing to rent space and what we are allowing to consume or operate within ourselves. A lot of people don't know that they don't even think themselves. They're thinking of other people, the other people's thoughts and other people's inclinations are filling their heart and their mind. So it's, it's I feel as though it's so much that we go through certain, we learn certain things, we go through certain ritualistic processes and learn certain techniques to clear our mind, clear our soul of these particular garbage that's going on every day. You know, we have to take the science and these elements, these sciences that we know, these truths that we know, and make them practical. Mm -hmm. as as right. That's true because I, I've learned also this in ritual uh, application that it is taught that and uh, aspects of ritual application when asked what is it and things like that, um, that we approach deep aspects of certain behaviors that we are discover within the subconscious aspects of our mind and learning how to overcome those things through higher aspects of the self. So once you're able to harness those lower aspects of the self, um, um, you're able to rise, you know, a, a mystic once told me in order to ascend the heights of heaven, you have to dive the depths of hell. With, and that's within your own subconscious mind. That's within the reservoir of your mind to understand what the true spiritual jihad, jihad is, is to fight the demonic forces within your subconscious aspect. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things that the left hand path focuses on. And this is what drew me to it as a Sufi to understand that, hey, I can understand the parallel. I'm not stepping into something blindly, you know, or accepting it on face value of the commonly theme of what it is, you see? So um, that's a good thing, you know, when we can understand that, um, you know, as God body men. So we can say that when we're, when we're, when we're zikering, we're planting seeds into the subconscious mind, huh? Mm -hmm. That grow apace. Over and over and over and over, and over and again. And over and mm -hmm. over and over and sometimes. And that uh, language that we have to use in a mix of much more English to even mm -hmm. describe a little bit of our language. Right. So, that, and that brings me to a question. Now I ask you, brothers, the important because they now we're gonna dig in it because we we know what we know about the power of sound. Mm -hmm. You know, we understand how certain words words vibrate and they tend to stir up the ether mm -hmm. and can you tell does a word have power without a person knowing the meaning of the word yeah because it's just like when you express words and certain phrases and say that when you spell, you are casting the spell. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful of the words we speak. We taught this in Islam, be mindful of our thoughts, of our deeds, of our action, to think before we speak. Mm -hmm. Because you could be invoking a spell or a curse upon your brother or sister. So it's just like words where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to blow on nine knots, he had to tie them. Now you learn that tradition in ma magic, the tying of the cord, where you blow incantations in the reverse aspect of it. So when I heard that story about Zainab casting the spell on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I understood from a perspective of knowing ritual, certain things of incantation and the power of words, the the um, the science of words, and the science of letters, because letters formulate words, which formulates energy, which formulates vibratory frequencies, with sound that we call wadifa, the science of 
sound healing. It's just like that. So words take on an expression of thought uh, and words take on an expression of the thoughts that we that we place out there. So as a man thinketh, so shall he or she be. So it's the same uh, understanding in that respect to understand that words do have an effect. You see, it's just like the saying, Stick and, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me, but that's untrue. <laughs> because names can hurt a person. Right, right. If you say in uh, humiliating words to a person, degrading a person, that can hurt a person. So it takes on um, it takes on a characteristic of casting spells. This is why we're mindful of words that are profanity or what we call cuss words or cur some people say Curse. out of phonetically not knowing why you cursing me, cursing at me, but it's cussing at me, but it's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yes, you know? <laughs> so it, it does take all the vibratory problem. frequency that can affect the uh, the positive outcome of something or the negative outcome of something. It's just like there was a suit, there was a tell about um, a Sufi mystic and he chanted a particular chant, but he had understanding of this chant to say that if I blow this chant on this ball of cotton and throw it on this person, it could kill him. Mm -hmm. Because the law says I'm the author of good and evil. But does one understand what that means when that is expressed? Because in good and evil, it's all the same. Right. It's all the same. You see, it's just like when we understand the nature of the jinn, look at yourself. You see? They think they are all my hands for enemy. Huh? You get told about the four enemies that everybody has. So the person that they think they are already has four additional enemies on the inside of them. The nafs or the ego, the power, carnal passions and desires, the dunya, the menial worldly matters and materialism, and then shaitan, but wrongdoing, evil, and devilishment. Honestly, why is that fourth one even an enemy? If we just translate that into another language and figure out that this shaitan and, and this, this this Lucifer and, and, and whatnot that people get so afraid of when they look at something that, that might look devilish. When it's taught by the Yazidis, the Yazidis of um, of Iraq, they have something called uh, Malik Taos, the peacock <laughs> team, and they call that shaitan. But they look at this shaitan as a symbol of liberation. It's just like in the left-hand path in Luciferianism, they say Lucifer symbolized illumination, enlightenment, breaking from the construct of the norm of societal bonds, the dogmas of society, religious dogmas, all of those things. So we understand the symbolism of how it applies to us as breaking from the norm of the construct, you see? So really it, it doesn't have anything to do with a, a Satanism, uh, but they'll take those symbols and apply it to symbologies of, like you said, if we understand those things, how does it you know, relate to ourselves and looking beyond that, you see? Um, because symbolism has a reference within um, our understanding of the mental and spiritual aspects of ourselves that we relate to these things. We're going back to the self and that, and that introspection people have to do to go on the inside. But then they think it's going to be dark on the inside, but they forget that they're the light bearer. They forget they're the light bearer. They're the one that is or is holding or possessing the light. Right. So they, they get afraid of going to this place that they think is dark, but they don't know that they they hold or they possess the light. Whatever being on the outside that's personified as this, that's, that's, that's not it. It's just you again. It's just you over there. 
trying to overcome yourself down there. Hmm. Yeah. So we take all those things into account. Definitely, self introspection, uh, the annihilation of the self. Uh, you know, all those things are definitely essential aspects in building uh, the anatomy of the body of God. You know, definitely. And um, we taught that through the Sufi traditions, and that, that's the call of my path and uh, delving into that that venturing into those aspects of myself you know great to have this discussion because you know the left hand is such a misunderstood man and uh as i spoke to you prior to the moment before both lives is that I'm not necessarily um, the most educated as it pertains to the left hand path. However, um, I, I am enlightened enough to someone understand the balance and the justice of the two. So, you know, I haven't been initiated into any bodies that would um be considered per se, the left hand mm -hmm. um however i do resonate with it when it's spoken from this particular degree now we can't we can say you know uh, that the, that as we speak about it and as you spoke about it from both directions that that dark side or that evil side doesn't exist it does. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. That that does exist in it. That does exist in it. However, that is not to be confused with the left hand left hand path. Mm -hmm. See, that's the that's the that's the that's the misconception by many because they'll see in let's say the celebrity world, they'll see the baphomet, all of the Satanism, debauchery. That's not that's has nothing to do with the left hand path. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the thing that differentiates from that you see because a true initiate of the left hand path will even frown upon that mm. they'll say these people are nothing of such that's the illusion that they cast to make it seem like because of their debauchery that ritualistic things are taking place on that level as it's presented to society now, there are things that are taking place, right? However, it has nothing to do with the left-hand path. Mm. The left-hand path is a path of empowerment and enlightenment, despite its antinomian agenda to rebel against the norm of societal bond and, uh, and, and the sheep herd of society, dogmatic religious uh -oh. structures. I you see? Right. He's gone. Peace, brother. Y'all gotta hold on for one second. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get some told me he was gonna pop up. Some told me he was gonna pop up. Yes, sir. How's it going? How's it going? Oh man, I'm blessed. Yes, sir. I'm definitely blessed, man. Yes, sir. Definitely going to get it in. We definitely got to get the cards in here, man. The brother's been holding it down. We've been touching some topics, but now that you hit, we got to go ahead uh, and extend this dialogue probably another hour. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God. And one thing. Brothers, are you here? Well, we got it. I'm gonna tell you, brother, man. You got. We, we want you to break down the uh, the picture, man, brother. Seeing that picture that you are, uh, are you on that flyer, brother, man? Uh, you know, a couple people want to know what's going on with the guy. You know, they, 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 you know, you know, uh, you know. Talk to us. Talk to us, brother. Oh, the picture. 
Um, um, no, that's just me wearing um the AMRC apron. Yes, sir. Everything yes. else, that's for those who know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course. Of course. I just want to know that. what it was. That's good. You told them enough right there, brother, man. I just want yeah. to know what it was. It's the uh, uh, I see you over there, brother God. I know what it is. When I saw it, I said, no, he didn't. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he done that. Yes, he did that. Yeah. Oh, wow. No. So, brother Khalil, now that you're here, I'm asking brother God, brother Shake, bro Shake. Uh, yeah, they both shakes, right? Yeah, we was, we was, we was on it. We was on the frequency, man. Yes, sir. So, brother, call in. Talk to us about the left hand of your Talk to us. I'm gonna mute somebody's mic because it's giving a feedback. Probably good. You know, you know it's double double double. Double. yes sir yeah, yeah, yeah. i can't hear okay right, right. can't hear can't you. you yeah i'm yeah, sure yeah. yeah. Go ahead, brother. Talk to us about the from your perspective. Um, Go ahead. All right. So, what was your question? Okay, you can hear me now. I can perfectly. All right. All right. Um. Demonstrate the left-handed path from your perspective. We have both shakes. They they've been they've been dialoguing quite um beautifully. But we like to uh, since you're you're here now, we like to hear from you. Um demonstrate for us, beloved. Well, ever since I've known K Ree, K Ree been a left hand path, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's been his thing from the door. You dig what I'm saying? But I think that people get a, mis a misconception to what the left hand path actually represents, right? Um, a lot of times they believe that it's the um, uh, Satanism per se. And when we talk about Satanism, we're talking about it from a religious perspective, which is a negative evil power um, for which um, is conquering souls, as they will may say, right? But the left hand path is not necessarily that. Um, everything comes from the stages of development. Uh, one of the earliest um, occult texts, it states Deus uh, um, Essen Versus, which is the devil is God in reverse, right? So it's making reference to coming from a different angle, like one may enter from the stages of order. I would say one from the stages of chaos, mm. right? So chaos is dealing more with the shadow of yourself and dealing more with the, the internal aspect in more of an evoking presence instead of an invoking presence, right? Mm. So let's take um, Crowley, for instance. The way that Crowley did things, they considered that to be the left-hand path. If you look at the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, let's abandon the right of the pentagram, for instance. The let's abandon the right of the pentagram they go what you would call in circumambulation, which is clockwise. Clockwise is an invoking direction. They then use upright pentagrams, and upright pentagrams are all, is also an invoking pentagram. Mm -hmm. Then it is sealed with the holy names of God, and then sealed with an extra layer, which is the invocation of the holy guardian angels, I mean of um, the archangels, right? which is um, Raphael, uh, Gabriel, Michael, and Aurelio. Mm -hmm. Now, you will see that Crowley went to the left, Diosil, which was clockwise, counterclockwise. But counterclockwise is the direction of banishing. 
and he used an inverted pentagram, which is an evoking pentagram, which is to pull out of you instead of evoking, which is to open yourself up to something, right? Mm -hmm. So so when we are speaking of the left-hand path, to every single path, there is what we call a negative sheaf or a negative veil, for which is also accompanies it. So the minute that one thing comes into process, the opposite of that thing also comes to it. It is married to it by nature. So when you are dealing with, from the left-hand path, you are coming from, uh, usually people work to go in to deal with their shadow self. The left hand path deals with the shadow and it deals with the developing the negative veils with inside of their own or eternal more organism through different stages. Some people go too far and they get caught up in lustful realities and lose themselves. They, mm. they, right. Because the danger of that path is if you don't have discipline, then you'll become a brother of the black hand. Right? God. So, that's what it's taking. Hold on, pause. Brother Shake, it's something going on with your mic, man. I'm going to keep you on so you can pop in and out. It, it, it gives you a feeling like that. I have to mute you, brother. Yeah, but. Yeah, but, 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 but that is the. um. So, that is the process. Now, if some brothers, some men will get caught up in sisters. They were all people, period, or Soros fratters who dabble in it will get can get lost going from that plane, right? They always considered the right hand path to be a little bit more safer because it doesn't go into the stages of indulgence and things of that nature, right? But if you have individuals who enter into the left hand path and they are not disciplined and uh, within themselves then they can get become brothers of the black hand in which they go into a denser aspect of the dunya and get trapped inside of the fetters for which will concase them. And that will actually last them a few lifetimes until they actually develop themselves outside of it, right? Mm. So is you have heard me say before that my heart is an altar in which everyone can come and worship their God. It doesn't matter what your God is. It could be Satan himself because my intent in my heart will purify whatever comes at its altar. So just because somebody go to the left hand path doesn't mean that they are, quote unquote, devil worshipers. And it doesn't necessarily mean that Satan is this awe inspiring uh, force of being for which is the most negative potential of life and these people want to eat babies and all of that stuff that's not how they necessarily go right because if you believe in satan but your heart is good then satan it becomes an angel of light whoa do you see what i'm saying mm. it's just it's just how it works right so if satan becomes an angel of light if your heart is pure when you're entering and you moving so, and that's the occult term in understanding from the esoteric perspective when they say that um, Satan was transformed into an angel of light. That is, is speaking of the, the purification and transformation of the shadow self into the more pure aspect of the state of being. Mm. Uh, but Brother K. Reek is sure. Go ahead, Brother K. I think I unmuted him. Go ahead, In brother. In many cases, because um, it is so that Lucifer, when we look at it, you know, it's not a literal sense, it's an aspect of the self because we understand it's the archetype that symbolizes liberation, breaking from uh, uh, the conformed ways of dogmatic religious structures and, and such. And we was just getting on that uh, before Brother Khalil Ali uh, came in about that which is reflects the left hand path from those who indulge into that aspect of it that they become absorbed and lost within that in the sense of uh uh debauchery you know so we in parallel with that definitely mm -hmm. and then that's where I'm, that's where I'm probably got a bad rap at because Crowley left the door open in which you can go to either way. 
it depends upon your intent. So if that's the choice that you choose to make, you can make that choice because there's many individuals who came from out of Crowley that went into different aspects of life, right? And did not fall into that, um, became brothers of the left. But let's make this clear. Anytime you hate something, you are practicing Satanism. You don't see nobody committing a more devilish spell than when somebody in anger say, I hope you die. I hate your guts. I wish you was this. But every time you have a negative thought towards an individual or negative thoughts within yourself, whether it's speaking of you from a lesser projection, uh, um, insecurity, uh, self-doubt, all of that is Satanism. Mm. All of that. Anything to call discord in the harmonies of life. Oh, 1,000%. But there's peace and darkness. Yes, sir. I know. <laughs> and, darkness, <laughs> and darkness is the light when we understand it, right? But I think the God is talking. Um, unmute him, and I'll, yes, you can mute myself. The God K. Ray. Go. Go oh yeah, I was just saying Crawley. Um, he also stated, "If you want to, if you want to see real Satanism, look at Christianity." You see, um, so that was an aspect of it because they gave way into those debaucherous ways of living, the impurity of the self, and and not understanding the higher aspects of the self. So we find that in the celebrity world, what I was explaining to the brothers that is a difference from those who held the bafflement in the celebrity world than that of those who are initiates. They frown upon that, you know, because they understand what it relates to and, and the aspects of the higher and lower self, the masculine uh, 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 hemisphere and the feminine hemisphere of the brain and in accordance with the unification of the conjoined union of the divine within duality. So there, there is a differentiation that um, must be stated and known of, like you said, brother uh, Khalil, of those who give into it. You know, they, those are the ones who worship egregory forces. You see, and that's the downfall. That's the dark aspect of it and all. Every system creates an right? Whenever you have a culmination of personalities or beings worshiping one thing or calling forth one thing, right? It's just like the same way. If somebody sits down and visualizes in their mind committing, let's say, um, sex, and let's say they visualize this within inside of their psyche, they must understand that they have given form to the unformed. Mm. They have given a sense of material to what is considered immaterial. These energies exist all around us. Every thought is energy. So when we are talking about the creation of succubus and things of that nature, we believe that these thought forms that we are producing on our every day, especially those that we concentrate upon, is just disappearing, but it's not. They are energy forces that do exist. And those who have similar energy, who qualify that by whatever that they do in creates an egregore, right? Now, depending on how strong our will is, our emotion, our belief, in that particular thing, then that's the life that it stands for. Majority of the thought forms that we have throughout the day exists and dissipates and disappears because it hasn't been fed. But whenever you continuously feed a particular thought form, you actually give life to that thought form. So, and that doesn't matter to whatever level that you're speaking on, it, it will create that particular edifice, right? For them, that's their form of worship. It's like when we look at Baphomet. And Baphomet 
is from my memory, a uh, um, uh, cube coming out of a sphere. He has the feet of a goat. In between that, looking like a yoga position, you have the caduceus coming out of the middle of the center. Then there are two breaths. Two fingers pointing up, one to a dark moon, one to a light moon. Bat wings in the back, five-pointed star upright, two horns going out into the different directions, which is Bina and we know um, Hakma, Hakma and Bina. And at the top, we have the lantern with the light that represents and symbolizes Keter. So we have a triangle that is forming here because at the point you have here a point to a line to a superfood disease or which you will have a triangle or three-dimensional element. The back wings represents the nocturnal aspect of being, right? The breast symbolizes like the animal and the animus. So this more represents the maternal aspect of creation or the nature of existence for which all things are bred from and formed from, right? And then it has on its side solvet co coaglia, Right. So when we are looking at these things, we're talking about solving or separating of substances and then reforming them because it's caduceus. And it, if I'm pronunciating it right, it's coming from out of the center. It is dealing with sexual energy. And it's dealing with forms of tantra for which can be utilized by the initiate to take that particular energy and then use it and separate it in order to bring it back into a culmination of being. Right. But I don't want to get too deep into that, but it's just showing the different aspects of being that exists within the human nature. It's not a devil. The only time that Baphomet becomes a devil is when you and within yourself and your intent is what producing that. So you have some people that have made that that. And it is true. In its reality that some has, you know, see it as that and they worship as that. And that's okay. But it profanes the real intent of what Bethlehem represent or Abu Fahmet actually represented. Abu Fahmet. represents. And that is what makes it problematic. Because Alifa's Levi was not a devil worshiper. And he is the one who drew that Bethlehem. So it depends on how far people want to go with it, you know? That's why I think they should be to Islam, because if they get a little bit of the Arabic language and they realize what Abu B. Bethlehem mm -hmm. means linguistically in the Arabic language, it'll, it'll demystify everything everybody is so-called afraid about. And hopefully, inshallah, prompt them to dive a little bit deeper into this thing that they were now, they used to be afraid, mm -hmm. now they're not. Talk about it, brother. It was uh, Abu, the father of the earth. And in Arabic, uh, fi is uh, a transitory uh, a word, meaning like by way of or, or from, but primarily by the earth. And then methamet. They try to tell us that Ahmed means praised and Muhammad means one who is praised worthy, but it's an embodiment of all of those 99 names, even those two that you've never heard Sheikh Sufi teach about in any other 99 names of Allah class. The two names of Allah that are definitely not positive at all, but they have to be there in order for the system to work as a whole. Otherwise, there won't be no balance. Hmm. Where you can be one who possesses hamid or praiseworthiness, if they're going to describe it that way, is by embodying all of them attributes. No matter if they look up or down to anybody else, you know what, what their, their, their use is for and how you have to use them while you're here. Regardless hmm. of Just like when we deal in the more science, we deal with the um um the attribute of the attributes of love, right? We talk about love and we say love is that which creates, saves, and destroys, right? So one would look at, you know, maybe um can I say this? Uh, um the profane would look at to destroy in a evil 
or a degraded manner, right? However, when we look at it from the sense of to destroy or death, knowing that life springs forth out of death, we understand in the divine ministry that de- that life actually springs forth from the light actually springs forth from the darkness. So therefore, you know, it's it's all and, and I've noticed this, you know, in religious controversy that is always prevalent, <laughs> especially among the so-called conscious community. And that is that these particular po- these particular dualities and polarities are only acknowledged when it's suitable for one's own agenda. But it can be expressed or acknowledged universally across the board, which what I would feel like we're in religious controversy. Mm-hmm. The God K Re has something to say. Okay. You gotta unmute him. My fuck bro, bro. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. Um, I was saying, yeah, this seems to be like, you know, what you're saying, a lot of the controversy in the so-called conscious community, you know, a lot of the uh, misconception. And then we spoke on it earlier about um, within the understanding of the left hand path, many of those um, um, who speak on that in the conscious community are not true initiates of that path. Because it entails, like the brother uh, Khalil Ali Allah was speaking, it entails a certain level of discipline, you see, and the knowing of the self. And if you're going in that path and you don't have knowledge of self, I've seen a lot of people, you know, come to me still today to say, you know, this is going on with them and um, because they didn't understand that aspect of the self. And um that's one of the essential things that people miss in entering the left hand path, especially from in, in the conscious community. You know, you have these people that uh, deter individuals and have them delving into things and calling up things that they have no understanding of because they lack the understanding that when you approach the deific aspect, you have to acknowledge that as a, a, as an aspect of your very own being. You see, mm-hmm. and being able to balance that uh, uh, energy of light and darkness, the shadow side, and understanding the higher aspects of the self and the lower aspects of the self. And that's one of the things that are essentially missing when you hear these brothers in the conscious community saying, you know, they are the left way and the baffle met this. And, you know, that was a, 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 a well breakdown that the brother did because that reminds me of, you know, uh, 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 of, of, the hermetic teachings, you know, when we're getting into the understanding of, her, uh, of the hermetic order of the golden dawn, and it's going into the whole breakdown of the baphomet, that is one of the greater understandings and relating that to the self and correlating that to the understanding of the higher and the lower self. You see, as the prophet Noble Dhu Ali taught us that these are the tools of the workshop of the mind where things are made by thought. So we Mm -hmm. understand the symbology of these things and how to relate them to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. They're missing out. I got 99 names. Don't be too afraid to flip that 99 upside down to get a 66. Because mm. what, else, what else are you going to get with that 66 other than the abjad, the exact numerical abjad. equivalent for the letters in the name Allah equals 66? Allah. <laughs> so whatever way you can embody it, whether it's 99 or 66, right side up, so-called, or upside down, so-called, Get them in yourself. Like Sheikh Abu Bamba mentioned, like the, the most difficult jihad is not involving the mind in anything that is not proper. So whatever situation you have in front of you, that's the jihad. Whatever you have to overcome internally to overcome whatever in the hell is in front of you, 
no matter how people around you might perceive it, as long as you get through it, it might look it might look bad some, but you made it through whatever in the hell that was because you knew how to traverse through it. But the same teachings from that same book on somebody's altar around the corner. You know what's interesting about that, right? Even like um, when dealing with it, like a, a good explanation, not to get off top of with the left hand is you have some, everybody's going to deal with your shadow self. It's just no way around it. You're going to deal with it. I always say the brothers with the left hand, they deal with it first and then work their way through. <laughs> That's it's just the truth, right? They work their way through. And then you have the brothers who, you know, the brothers of the hand that does not deal with that first. They come from the light and then they work themselves into the darkness to mm. discover. You see what I mean? Both of them are worthy. In order for you to ascertain communication with your holy guardian angel. There is no... It's not based upon what's better. It's based upon what works for you. Mm -hmm. And you have to be honest with yourself because it is a danger for those that deal with that particular left hand. Because if you are not balanced and you're not grounded, you can be lost. And you can have certain things um, Attached to you, it's very hard for you to get off. And that's that vampirism and mm. stuff like that because you when you when you going into that particular science and you going heavy into it, people lose themselves. They really lose themselves. Like you'll see somebody addicted to sex, right? And then they very, very addicted. They can't live without it, right? And let's say they are brothers of the left hand. They might have been a little bit substantial. But then they get so caught up in it, they begin to become obsessive with it. And, that, and they'll say, well, you know, that's because of the spirit. It's not because of the spirit. It's because of you. And it's because of a lack of your balancing it within the sufferers of your own personality and in your own being. You see what I mean? So therefore, you have to be careful. I'm not going to play myself. I don't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's k right thing. I always say that um, there are there are y'all can hear me. Yes, sir. I always say there are two aspects of the lower self. You got that aspect, like you said, that given to those deep, dark, lower desires where you become mm -hmm. lost within that. Then there's an aspect of the lower self, which is challenging within the understanding of empowerment and to uh, understand the shadow self in, accord, in, in alignment with the, the higher self, the holy guardian angel that we go do as, as initiates. So I always note that, you know, just like you expressed there, brother, um, there's an aspect of the left hand path where people can get lost. Totally, mm -hmm. there, there are even, I know in the path that I followed the initiatory system, there are warnings given mm -hmm. that say, if you dare, you playing at your own risk. Absolutely. There are warnings given because something can take a hold of you and mess you up mentally or physically. You know, and we know that, brother. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, wow. So hey, me and K Free one time I came to his house. Right? He was living over there in his apartment. So we came up in that house, God. And I <laughs> first I come walking in, right? I look at the room. I can tell that that's where they was doing the work at, right? Is in that room. Remember when I came in, came right? And I looked at the room. I said, I could feel it. This, this is where you was doing it at. Let me tell you something. We sitting up in the living room. His damn pennies coming out of thin air. I'm, there's no lie. You and I sitting down in pennies. Yeah. Of 
at you from nowhere. There's nobody <laughs> throwing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, the gen I've 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 learned throughout the years, they, they operate in strange type ways. You know, they do strange things. You know, um, and that's the thing about some of the gen, you know, they'll they'll do strange things. And um you know, the Neva Sadrak, he he's uh he, uh, you you put me on to him, brother. Um, uh, magic that works. You know, mm -hmm. he speaks about um, you know, uh, the nature of the gym, gym magic, and certain strange things that they're able to do. You know, we would we would label it within the context of the paranormal. You know, um, but yeah, it, it's it's you know, it's real, and I advise a lot of people that come to me to say. Hey, what about the left hand path? I advise against it, believe it or not, because it's it's, it's for me of what I found within myself, or like the brother said, of what works for me. But it's not it's not a path of conversion where I'm set out to say, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna initiate you. The only only people I initiated was my wives. That's it. Mm -hmm. So I. You show me a a, a, a a sister that delved into the left hand path. I know not none. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, man. Yeah, I, <laughs> I I know some, but I'm just saying outside of what I'm saying, I don't know any. You see, I have I know a lot of people that say certain things, but you know, me on the on the outside looking in, I know it's not what 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 it appears to be. You know, because uh, that calipothic sphere is no joke. You know, mm -hmm. that's the reverse of the sephirah, where you're going down, but you're really going up in the ascension of the lower aspect of yourself and rising mm -hmm. back up. So everything is reversed. It's like a mirror reflection. So you strip from the veil of illusion. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't account for anyone that I've known, especially a, 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 a melanated female, you know, <laughs> that I could say to have done that. I I, I don't know any. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, hey, bro, hey, bro. Uh, if you can, can you cite the orders you belong to? Like the orders that you belong to. Well, yeah, I, I stated that earlier. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I wanted that out there. Any also belong to specific orders? Right. You know, my my first thing was within the left hand path. Um, the uh, temple of Set. Because what interested me about the Temple of Set, that they speak about Thu, uh, um, Thu Nun Al Nizm, you know, the last of the Setian magicians, as he was known. Uh, Thu Nun Al Nizri set up something called the Malamti Sufi Order. And that is the structure by which um, um, you, you taught me this, brother, years ago about uh, Boaz and Jockin. You know, because Thu Noon had the pillars that symbolize those things that was later carried on within the Freemasonry. So within the Temple of Set, they expose within the Vatican the archives that they have of Thu Noon because, you know, a lot of his materials are so-called been destroyed. But we know that the Vatican have records of all of those kind of documents. You know, they're not going to actually destroy the documents. So... You know, um, um, but that was one of my first orders that I came through, the Temple of Set, then the Order of Phosphorus. Um, uh, and I studied a little bit under an order called Dragon Rouge, uh, which is three of the high left-hand path orders in, in, in the nation, those three orders. All else, all else orders are like, you know, that that's internet kind of stuff. 
you know, because they call you, they call you for um, initiatory work as far as within um, a ceremonial base, you see. So as far as the Sufism, you know, uh, the Morit, uh under uh, Brother uh, Haji Muhammad Salam under Paolo Atiyah, Sufi order from the Sudan. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the base of um, the origin of, of where, where, where I hail from. Well, not, not to get away from that, but just to clarify this, Dr. Lovacan, you were not a true member of that order, was he? Unmute yourself. Uh, unmute yourself. Huh? Yeah, there you. Know, say what you said. What you say? I said, um, no, he, um, he was not even from the bloodline of the Mahdi of of Sudan. Um, what it was in the nineteen eighties, like when when people seen the pictures of him and um. Saeed Sadiq, who was the prime minister at one point of the Sudan, who was part of the Mahdi family, um, that those pictures was because of uh, a situation that took place where they came actually to America to confront him because there were two Ansar movements. There was the Ansar Islamic revivalist movement, and that was headed by my Sheikh Haji Muhammad Salam. I was once under Malachi York, but I defected from that earlier on and was under the Ansar Islamic Revivalist Movement. Um, Haji Muhammad Salam was the imam, the uh, national imam of the, uh, of the nation here under um, uh, uh, Said, uh, Said Sadiq al-Mahdi. So um, he was never a member of that. You know, when he mentioned uh, a, an initiator who initiated him along the junctions of the two now, that was a fabricated story. There was no such man that was by the name of Muhammad Mahmoud Muhammad that initiated him in the Kawatiya uh, Sufi order or the Samaniya Sufi order. You know, uh, those are things basically he made up for um, popularity and things of the such. However, he did marry a prominent sheikh from um, Egypt. I think his name was Umar Sanusi. And they was a prominent family, the Sanusi family. And he married a woman by the name of Fatima Sanusi, who was Umar Sanusi's daughter. So he did form some kind of connection. However, it was not particularly or necessarily with the Mahdi family. It was through another connection. But he holds that banner and he taught aspects of the Mahdi's teachings with uh, distortions of his own. Because we talking about really Sunni Muslims, they didn't they didn't really subscribe to that doctrine as they try to make it. The Nawabians tried to make like, oh, they was backed by. This is why when they later switched over, they didn't make claim to the Sudan. They were saying that this man was from Ghana somewhere. They no, no longer made claim to the Sudan because they knew that basically the cat was out the bag, that she wasn't from the Sudan, you didn't come from the Mati family, you fabricated the story of your mother going over there and meeting Sheikh Al-Hadi and the university and all that. That never occurred. So, yeah, it was fabricated. It was fabricated, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, he made it appear good. I mean, he was tuned in. I, I don't want to say the man wasn't on a on a frequency of some things because he was on something. You know, but I think that whatever he came into, because he was an initiate, and I think that uh, the power corrupted him. Because the sheikh told me that he was obsessed with a power that related to the Sufi masters that deal with um, a stone that's called Yemeni, Akik Yemeni. And it's supposed to be a magical stone that gives you power and possession of the jinn. So 
in my understanding, I think that he let that power corrupt him and gave into his lower passions and desires. And it became like, like you said, like the sexual thing, you know, it, it, it was no longer that disciplined aspect, you know. So we as Ansaru Allah under him, when we looked at the whole Nawapian uh, metamorphosis, it was like strange to us because we were saying at that point, like, what is he doing? You know, he's conforming to things that he once spoke against, you know. So at that point, that's when a lot of us defected. And uh, I think it was late 90s, mid, late 90s, early 2000 is when I uh, last saw him. Uh, I think it was 2001 before uh, his detainment. I think that was the event where Jesse Jackson was down there. And they had Jesse Jackson with the Fez. Um, he was not a Nuwapian. They made him put the Fez on. And um, they had the Striners there. Uh, brothers from uh, the Strine Temple of Mecca Strine Temple. Uh, Al Mahdi Strine Temple was really uh, uh, clandestine because it was just under him. He was stating that he was the superior, supreme grand potentate of worldwide shrine dome. And we all know that that was not the case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> May Allah be pleased with the brother for what the brother is, you know. I don't want to think that we're slandering the brother. No, not at all. Not at all. Because, like, there's a lot of controversy about that. You know, I, I never really gave my say. I was placed into a position by my sheikhs, you know, who uh, Sheikh Haji Muhammad Salam, he passed away so many years ago. Um but I was I was placed in a position at one point to to clarify a lot of the things that were were misconceptions, you know, is even um, down to the origin of the flag of the Mahdi, you know, the true origin of that and what it symbolized and where it came from, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, um, but like like I said, you know, we don't like you, you said we don't want to take away certain things or, or create slander because you know I've I've heard these things, you know, I've been a I'm uh I subscribe to the teachings of Malachi York as an answer back in the eighties. So there's a lot of things I've heard coming up through the Philadelphia Jamaat, you know, uh, but you know, you 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 brush those things off, you know. But at a time, you start to wonder and, and start to rethink certain things to say, you know, <laughs> you know, is it so? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, and then what from, it's yeah. questionable. Yeah. It's yeah. questionable. But, but I would say he was, um, um, he was very versed. That I know because I, I met him personally. And he was very well versed in language and scriptures, uh, you know, biblically, Quranically sound and uh, um, certain things. You know, he was very well versed, you know, um, and that I don't take away, you know, because I knew that myself by certain questions I used to ask, you know, um, coming up and my father and some of my family members. So, um you know, but I think some people took it a little bit too far, you know, mm -hmm. with the worship aspect of it. Well, yeah. I, I, can't say this. <laughs> I can't say I uh, learned yeah. the new aspects for the teachers of uh, body uh, I've read, you know, uh, pieces of his work last year. I can't read it. You should do it. I think that makes it the sound. What'd you say? Muting. I think that makes it the double sound. All right, I got it. Um, I'm not. I'm not as versed in the in the, in, in his teachings. However, um, 
I've listened to some of his um, recordings, mm-hmm. some of his videos, and I must say the brother is well versed, man. Um, Absolutely, the brother. The brother is one of the, is a, a captivating speaker. You have to give him that. Um, you can put that like beside each other, side by side, mm-hmm. without a without a reference in front of you. You know, it, it, it takes a certain type of mind to be able. Hey, to do that. Bad, Yes, sir. Bad. That he was able to retain such vast amount of information, you know. Um, I, I, I just, you know, I try, I strive, you know, for the sake of of, of uh, respect. I try now because I don't know any much about his case or what he went through. Um, because I never took my time to even dig into into that. Um. But what I can say is this. He did, you know, he did some good. You know what I'm saying? We saw some of the fruit of his work, um, Tamar Ray down in Georgia. I mean, to do something like that, I mean, I mean, you know, you know, you, you just have to, you just have to say, you know, man, you got to give your hats off to a brother with that ability to gather people to, uh, you know, to have that much influence to for them to see the vision and to actually produce something of that nature. You know what I mean? Um, it's not like it's the first time that it's been done. However, you know, the, but to see it still being done is most definitely something that, you know, I can say, you know, I can take my hats off to him for his good works. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, I would say that definitely because, like I said, um, I knew a lot of the elders here in Philadelphia, and they was telling me some stories. They were saying, yo, he used to be um, coming to Philly. He frequent Philly a lot because um, his teacher was Sheikh Dawood Ahmed Faisal mm-hmm. um, from out of New York. He was under State Street Masjid under Sheikh Dawood initially. Um mm-hmm. So there's an interesting story, you know, about his, uh, you know, his upbringing and things like that. But it's a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't know that his mother is a native of Philadelphia. She's from the Fletcher family and the Williams family. Um, um, she owned a store back in the days in New York called the Merchants of Oya. So. Mm-hmm. She was uh, an initiate of the, the, the Santo, Lucami, Santeria, his mother. Um, mm-hmm. So that's where he get all the, you know, the cultural things as far as that. And a lot of things uh, like his uh, brother, uh, Imam Obaba Oya, he's the head of the African Islamic um, mission. Um, so it's an interesting story, you know, uh, definitely about the brother and his uh, upbringing and things like that. And, you know, the things that he did for the people, you know, a lot of stories we used to hear coming up young. Um, you know, one of the things um, uh, we knew about him is that um, he had a lot of respect from uh the gambino family in new york mm-hmm. you know they gave him a lot of support as far as like you know supporting his movement um you know all that kind of stuff like that a lot of celebrity support uh influencing in the celebrity world in hollywood because you know he was a singer as well so mm-hmm. you know he has a lot of interesting background but we know you know that um is always a value to recognize that it's just like with the messenger brung us you know we got to go back to uh you know appreciating that with 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 the masters brung to us and liberating us as a people you know so that's one of the things i do applaud him for but i have not myself since the time of 2002 followed that case believe it or not you know Mm-hmm. It was just too much for me because at that point, you know, I, I I had evolved past all of that, you know, at that point. So I wasn't part of the Nawapian organization or any of that. 
you know, I had evolved past that point. You know, I was already in the left hand path as a as a part of that. <laughs> you know, so a lot of the things they was coming up with was kind of like late, you know, considered to me. You know, it's like, okay, they coming with this ritual and all of this, but they once upon a time spoke against those things. So you know, you know, man, 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 Brother Khaled, I do I want to feel those before we get out. Yes, sir. I would I like, like for you, you to build, to build on, on, on. I would like for you to build on the the name Farad or Fard. <laughs> As it pertains to Sufism, as well as the deeper aspects of the teachings of the messenger. Before we, let, let, let's deal with that, and, and we're gonna allow that to be the treat for the people before we sign off. Is fine. Well, you know, I like to have my documentation in front of me, so I'm <laughs> grabbing it right now. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I like to cite documentation. Yes, sir. Of um, of what I like to say. So, one of the um, the books that I like to deal with is a book when I had asked um, Master Farah Muhammad. I wanted to understand his name better. So, one of the things that I had asked for was to know his name. And the book that I was able to come up with um, that I have is called The Principles of Sufism by Nahid Agna. Agna. Um, let me pull it up real fast and grab it. Okay. This is it right here. This is it. Because I put all of this up on my page. I think that I had tagged you in it um, at one point in time. I don't I don't really know. Um yeah, you tagged hold on. I tagged you in it. Okay. All right, give me one second. I like to have all my stuff um documented. I'd like to have everything documented. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> I'll be having these books everywhere, man. Mm -hmm. I'll be having them everywhere, but I like to speak from a documented perspective into the understanding of Fard because um, the great master um Ibn Arabi spoke deeply on the terminology for it. He built entire he built an entire system to speaking on what the name Fard actually represented in Sufism. Here it is right here. Okay. There you go. It took me time to get it. There you go. Okay. One minute, brothers. I'm almost here. There we go. Talk, abandonment. So this is the first one when I started looking deeper into the meaning of it. Um, this, I would say, I was brought here into a deeper understanding of the terminology far. And the book that it was coming out of was The Principles of Sufism um, by Nahid Agna. 
And we have the standard understanding of the word fard, for which as fard being um excuse me, of which fard represents solitary to be withdrawn. So what I learned from that is that with inside of his name himself, he had given a, um, a um, an initiatory aspect. The fart as a personality is also a state of being because fart symbolizes oneness, to be withdrawn and to be solitary. According to Nahid Agna, she stated that when one has reached the state of fart, that they have reached a state of no longer happenstance and chance. They have the ability of not like going out into the Himalayas, but entering the confines and being withdrawn amongst the presence of the divine while still being in the midst of everyone else. Mm. And that is the state of fart. Complete oneness with Allah. I always call Fard the hidden name of Allah because of what the name Fard signifies and the divinity that comes along with it. Um, Ibn Arabi, for instance, one minute, let me put this right here. Because Ibn Arabi has spoke on this uh, um, a great deal um, on the terminology Fard and what that actually represented. One minute, here it is right here. Boom. <clears throat> this is by Ibn Arabi. It's opening now, one minute, please. All right. So Ibn Arabi has an entire subject matter on sainthood. And he speaks of this. He said, among the classes which belong to the second category, the most important class is the individuals are fraud or fraud. They are the saints who are not controlled by the Qutb. Ibn Arabi's descriptions of this class coincide with those of sainthood in general. Therefore, it can be said that is the class of individuals which best represents Ibn Arabi's ideas of saints. So the frauds are the saints. And the frauds, as we may speak, exist within a center that is closest to the divine to carry out the work of the divine. Mm. You see what I mean? So when we are looking at the station of God, because we're coming through stages. So you're coming into the state of God, which is when you have reached the state of oneness with the divine within your own nature and your own self. We call that reaching the divine presence. Divine once you reach the, right. Once you reach the divine presence, you become self-guided. So you be on the state of happen chance, uh, happenstance and chance, meaning that everything and every movement and every quality of what you are is a law. Mm. So there is no errors. It is only a law because all of your communication is being received from the Department of Supreme Wisdom mm. and being emitted to you in which you speak it unto the people. It's no more than when you had uh, Yoganada and when he will go to speak, he will sit back and he will tie into his super consciousness. And then he will speak. So you might be looking at your Ganada, but in reality, he is receiving his communications from the super consciousness and therefore from the Department of Supreme Wisdom. So everything that he speaks is a Quran. Lord is the speaking of the divine. Mm-hmm. And that to me is the state of fraud. Okay. Mm. You see what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. That's the state of fraud. Because when you look at Wally, let's take the terminology Wallace. Um, Malena Muhammad breaks it down with Wala. He breaks it down a Wala, which means friend, and is taken from the word Wali. What he then writes in his footnotes is that when you have two, uh, um, um, two things after Wala, 
in this case, CE, he said it makes it a, it makes him a master of a thing. Mm. When we look at Wali, Wali symbolizes saint. You have to understand the different perspectives. We might sit and say that means friend. Well, to the external Muslim, friend is just, oh, they just a friend of Allah, meaning like a prophet or someone that is close to Allah. But to the Sufis, when we say friend of Allah, it means that there is nothing but Allah. Uh There is a difference in our understanding of it and a more higher understanding of what that terminology actually represents, right? So now that takes another perspective. So now you come up to the stages of sainthood and then he gives you within his name the initiatory practices which was necessary to reach sainthood. And that is the stages of fall. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And then, and then when you reach through that stage, then you reach the final stage, which is Muhammad. Mm. That represents the Isan al-Kamil or the perfect man. Teach God. So these are stages for which he is teaching us through all within his name. But still the blind cannot see. Do you see what I'm saying? The blind cannot see. Mm. And you know what? That's a degree. <laughs> Man, uh, that's something that's going to need to be chewed on right there. That that's Oh, absolutely. Because what is the Sufi taught? To withdraw. Yes, sir. To become solitary. Mm-hmm. Many of them, they go up into the wilderness or they go up into the Himalayan mountains. The real study is to be able to exist amongst them all and enter that state at will. That the takes, land at will. Absolutely. So that means you have to enter that state. That comes from Zika. That comes from deep, deep meditation. Deep, deep mm-hmm. On a continuous basis in order to attune your being with the divine. Listen, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that prayer to a Muslim is like gasoline to a car. It keeps us going. Minister Alif said that during prayer, the mind reaches its fullest potential. Because when Salat is done right, that is the yoga of the gods. For every position of Salat, is emulating the position of the sun throughout is transversing throughout the sky. Every position, it meets itself perfectly line for line. <clears throat> and in that, it attunes us to the divine because there is no greater representation because they say we worship the sun. Well, what is a greater representation of Allah than the Son? If you are speaking from a creative aspect, show me when do the Son deny the wicked heat? No. Show me when do the Son say, I am not going to do precipitation in that area and cause it not to rain if the clouds are filled with water? When do the sun ever say, I'm only going to put grass right there? Even though the the, 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 the soil is moist, that is plentiful for the grass, it never denies and it never asks for anything back. The sun shows complete compassion. It shows complete love without selfishness. And no matter the wickedness, whether it is right or whether you wrong, it always does its duty in its performance to creation. Mm. So this is what we're dealing with, right? So when we are looking at the divine, we have to look at it from the perspective. But the question is, when you enter into Salat, what are you entering into Salat for? Because if you must pray as if you see Allah, And even if you don't see him, he sees you. 
What does that really mean? Because in the state of fraud, you see a law very clearly. So if you are sitting down and you are doing select, God into select different than the average believer. For we enter select understanding the scientific reality behind it and the alchemical composition that comes behind it because salat is a, is a banishing and an invocation ritual. What make us think is not? You stand, you stand upon an oblong square. The oblong square represents the universe. So you stand in the center of an oblong square, which is the universe. You stand as a point within the squaring of the circle, the, 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 uh, the square, the, the, the uh, squaring the circle. You seek in four different directions. The four different directions are banishings. If you know what you're doing, then you will visualize that certain things are taking place in the area that you turn. Because the real reality is. And every time when the time comes for prayer, you should turn in the direction that the sun is located. That's how it was done in ancient Egypt. That's how it should be done today. We don't have time for superstition. <laughs> we must attune ourselves for what is divine. That's why there's a reality of a new Islam today. We don't have the time to follow superstitions that men no longer understand. Right. In the West, we do understand. It. And we understand what must be done. So if I intend to salat, sometimes I visualize myself in front of me. And that is my divine that represent that is representing emblematic of me, of my true self. If I go to communion with Allah, Master Muhammad, then I visualize him. If I'm communion with the cosmic intelligence and consciousness, I visualize nothing. But at the end of the day, it all is the same thing. For the worshiper and the worship are the same. The only difference of the worship in the worship is your understanding of things. It is only one essence, one source, one mind. Your dimension of perception begins to deepen. And when it deepens and, is, and the perception is wide enough, they call you awakened and enlightened. When your perception is dense, they call you ignorant and sleep. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we are all in the same room. <laughs> yes, sir. It's just that one got better glasses than the other that might be a little more clear. <laughs> <laughs> and when we got them clearer glasses, we say that's the shack. We say that's the God, that's the divine. That's how come I greet brothers. Salam Allah. Allah salam. What is the greatest greeting that I can give you? No more than if you say namaste. I'm going to greet you, Salam Allah, because I am greeting the God for who you are beyond the illusion of what you think you are. Because you're a manifestation of me and I'm a manifestation of you. We are divine whether we know it or not. So we are going through these stages of development to awaken and broaden our perception of what we deem reality. And when we deem and understand what reality truly is, we are considered awakened. But the only difference of a Buddha and the one that is not is that the Buddha acknowledges the writing perception, while the other Buddha, his perception is limited. 
that is the secret of it all. And that is the state of fraud. Fraud in Muhammad. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a different story, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a different story. We ain't going there, but we going to get there. Yes, sir. We going to get there. You dig? We going to get there. But we have to understand that the time that we are living in, that there's a changing of the guard. The East has controlled. And look at what they have done with our Islam. We gave Islam to the world to help the world to get back in accordance with the natural and universal law of its creation. And they have taken it and they have turned it into their filthy religion. That's what they have done. But it's our time. The sun is rising in the West. And that spiritual sun that is rising in the West will change the entire disposition of worship, according to the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we are there now. We are there now. Look at what my brother Tavares speaks about online. That will be shunned, but it's the truth. It is the time of the gods. Yes, sir. If people are not prepared for that, then they're in the wrong thing. If you're a Muslim in a Sufi wrong. order, then you're not in a Sufi order. Oh, 1,000%, because that's the secret of Sufism, is that man is God. Everything else is a shell. Everything else is a facade. It is to help the child that he don't open the door wide enough until he's ready to truly walk through the door. So he give him a peep, wash him up, dress him up. You see how that work? And they give him a little crack, let him knock. Then they give him a little crack. And then by the time, hopefully, the door come off the hinges when he's ready to walk all the way through. And that's what Sufism is. It is a guiding tool of yourself that will lead you to yourself. And if people think Sufism is other than that, it's because you don't want to accept the reality and you're stuck between the illusion of the religion for which was used in order to try to give you some form of structure and substance until you are prepared to perceive yourself as your true self. Mm. Teach God. That's what the form is. That's what the messenger teaches is. That's what, what the uh, noble Drew, the prophet Noble Drew Ali gave is. That's what it is. You can't be in these systems and still thinking and waiting on messiahs to come and save you. You are the messiah. Instead of worshiping the Makti, find the Makti in yourself. These stations is open to anyone who developed themselves to reach the self of the true self, the self of thy very self. Mm. You don't need a million doors. You just need one and stick through the door and eventually you will ascertain it. But the ultimate reality of all things is that man is God. And besides man, there is absolutely no God. And that's it. Now, if people will argue against it, it's because they don't know what man is. And until you truly know what man is, you will always think of what man is not. Stuck in a level of belief, right? If they believe mm -hmm. in God, then they can never know God. 1,000%. Because if man is my form, then you are trapped in an illusion. Mm. 
It's just the bottom line. If you saying my well, this is me, me, then you got to that you face. You still ain't it's just a fact. Hmm. How can something be a reality if you can't even touch me? If the woman that you kiss, you can't even kiss her. The woman you engage, you can't even truly engage her. Because Adams don't touch. Yeah, nothing touches. No, because they like bumper cars. They have an electric magnetic field that's around them. They can't touch. They can't touch each other. So therefore, you're condensed through the movement of protein sending chemicals throughout your brain that is telling you that this event is occurring. But in reality, this is just an exchange of energy. And you are being conditioned that this exchange of energy is you shaking my hand. But remove the illusion and what do you have? You have specks of light. Light upon light. No. That's all you got. It is man creating this reality. Now, no, maybe wait, wait, wait. not. But then we'll speak about the unknown observer. They say Allah neither sleeps nor does he slumber. No, you do not. Because my body at rest, it shows that I'm still alive. I'm having dreams. I have thoughts. That's not slumber. Talk it. They say Allah does not defecate. One aspect of Allah does not defecate. My form does, but there's an aspect in me that does not. All that exists is Allah. Allah is the only reality. That means that anything that you believe exists that is not Allah is an illusion that you have created and that is shirk. 1,000%. It is shirk 1,000%. Oh, I'm waiting on the naysayers. <laughs> it ain't come with much. You got to find me a God. If you say that you're God, you telling me of a God that does not exist. Especially if you got tired on the seventh day. 1,000%. A damn particle is not even a particle. The electron breaks down from a particle to a wave. How is that real? You are not to to you can have a wall directly in front of you. You will look at that wall and you will say that wall is that wall is the illusion. Because what about the trillions of life forms that exist between you and that wall? The germs, the bacteria, the trillions of atoms and particles that exist between you and that wall. That's an existence. Space is a word that deprives you of reality. It creates an illusion. Mm. It's not real. Everything is light. All that exists is light. The problem is we have chemical shades that keep us living in the illusion. That's it. When we reach the state of Fard and Muhammad, then such an illusion is no more. That's the reality of it. True Tawheed. Oneness. Mm. That's when you see Allah as everything in everything. Right. Right. That's it right there. Because if you say that anything in this outside of the world, then ain't you saying that something can exist besides Allah? How can that be? Even if you take and say that Allah is existing in the darkness, and you say he created, he created from what? 
from himself. So then that mean if Allah is creating from himself, then every aspect of existence is an aspect of himself. It is only Allah dealing with Allah. It's just that one acknowledges it and one do not. That's it. That's the secret of the teachers of the messenger, the teachers of Sufism, of every single magical order that you could speak of, every Hinduism, every Moorish science temple, the entire Circle 7 Quran, the entire Quran itself, the Bhagavad Gita, whatever you want to name, that's what it's telling you in the end. Period. It ain't telling you nothing else. <laughs> what else is it telling you? I don't know what else is it telling you. You know, only separated by me by the illusion. You made up of atoms and you're made up of atoms. You're a speck of light like I'm a speck of light. You made up of energy just like I'm made up of energy. You and I are connected by electric magnetic fields that reaches out to the grand field. Everything you do and everything you say to everything you think to everything you feel affects that web and it affects everything else. Mm. That's why a Christ child only needs to be born. It does not need to live because by its birth, it automatically affects the grid. <laughs> Good God, oh this is what we're dealing with if we're going to really teach them. And if they're really going to accept the truth of it, then this is what you're going to deal with. We have to get out of the illusion, man. You worship a Messiah, the Messiah is you. You worship a Makhdi, the Makhdi is you. You worship a prophet, the prophet is you. they all aspects of you. It's just that one acknowledges their existence and one do not. That's it. It's the whole thing about Sufism, like you said, like Sheikh Sufi mentioned, the only difference between the Sheikh and the disciple is if there isn't one, really. There is no difference between the Sheikh and the disciple. Mm -hmm. The differentiation, meaning it's just this one thing that appeared again, that particular differentiation of the essence of Allah as the Sheikh has realized it and has actualized it. Right. And now he is embodying that and, and demonstrating it to himself over there. That's 1,000%. Yeah. That's, that's 1, Only Allah can worship Allah. So it won't wake up tomorrow and be God, go to sleep, and then wake up the day after that and be God. <laughs> I remember I remember when I read those words from the um, the late Sheikh uh, Muhammad Rahim Bawa Mahayadeen that only God God. God. Only God can be stuck with me, bro. That's like I've never let go of those words. I pondered those words. And, oh man, I've never let go of those words. Alhamdulillah. Children, gems of my eyes. That's from the book that it came from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What I would tell people is when you enter into select, forget that you're doing select. Let go. So that itself will initiate you into the divine. They will definitely do it. Let go. Just let go. Be, let all of you, the entire being of you, sing the praises of Allah. And while you're doing it, Start to forget your individuality. Become absorbed. We are a speck. Be absorbed and accept the ocean. Mm. And mm. That's, <laughs> that's what all of this is about. Well, look, brothers. We done been on here two hours and 44 minutes. Oh, yes, sir. Listen, I want each and every one of y'all to have a 
you know, say something to the to listener, the listener. And, uh, give them give a them word, a wisdom that they can take, can take to their the pillows the tonight and raise them to the AM and, and, and be great be and be their God. God. So, so uh, uh, brother, uh, brother yeah, Shake, yeah. as in Baba Azar, go ahead, yeah. brother, man. Get the people yeah. to take to yeah. their pillows, brother. Yeah. brother. Well, the brother said, you know, he said it all. Yes, you know, I'm, we all in total alignment. You know, um, uh, and Santo Al Camille, the divine man, the spare man of the prophet Noble Jewel Ali said, you know, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. You know, um, that's what it's about, you know, coming in uh, attunement with the divine self, the higher self. And, uh, I can say it no better than the brother said. And, uh, you know, I leave everybody with that. You know, knowledge of self is essential uh, within the path and the key of life and understanding and stripping from the veil of illusion. So I leave everyone with that statement. Praise Praise God. God. We can expect to have you back on the show, right, brother? Yes, indeed. Uh, praise, 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 praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Brother We got we got some ritual work to do, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. I know, I know, I know. And I'm gonna man, we're gonna link, I'm gonna need your number, man, so we can talk and build further. You know what I mean? Yes, definitely. Yes, sir. Shake brother What you got for us, brother? I mean, everything that we already got, man, Allah already gave to us. Sheikh Afri Mamba put it in one of his poems in the very first line. Kaf ha ya rain saad ufitu kula darari ni la ubi siri la ilaha illallah. Kaf ha ya rain saad esoterically is going to break down to 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 a whole sentence, even though they look like individual letters, but it means O oh, generous and charitable provider. What is this generous and charitable provider going to give to me? The next line comes and it says, You've already removed all the harmful things away from me. So everything that I really need, I already have. By the secrets of la ilaha illallah, by the secrets of there being no existence but this divine reality, by there being no God but Khalil Ali Allah. But I mean, no God, but all of us on the screen right now, but I mean, no God, but everybody watching the video, but I mean, no God sent here to save the person going through something, but the person that can get themselves out of it. Hmm. Hey, God, you just drop bombs. So I'm just going <laughs> to I need a yo. I need, need my bomb, bomb right? You need a bomb. Because that bomb. Bomb was a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Khalil, what we got? Oh, oh man, one thing that I got to see is man, I'm thankful that no. I was Mr. August by the other gods, man. Um, that's like a spiritual bath. A Muslim love wants to be in the midst of his beloved brothers at all times. The messenger teaches us in the 24 principles of Islam. So I'm very thankful for that. And hopefully that um that the channel continuously grow by Allah's will and may the light um, manifest um, in extension. Comes on pecked, light in extension. And made the mantra and the the zikr of the new age be salam Allah. <laughs> because believe me, that's the only reality. Allah is salam. Yes, sir. Allah is salam. Allah salam. Well, well, if I was to say anything, if I was to say anything, what I would say is, Islam and peace and goodwill to all. Praise be to Allah. 
لا إله إلا الله حي صلى الله عليه وسلم Holy Prophet Noble Jew Ali and all of those divine prophets that were sent all those thoughts of Allah that were sent and manifested in flesh save nations from the wrath of Allah by teaching them to save themselves I would like to say this He who knows it doesn't say it. And who says it doesn't know it. Absolutely. Peace. Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. Peace, God. Salam alaikum. Yes, sir.